So today's wind tunnel tests, it kind of catches midway through a development cycle. We're trying out a few different combinations of new fabrics. We have a new smooth fabric that we're trying out on the torso, legs and the arms of our Neo suit, which is a double layer suit. We've got a few new textured fabrics that we're trying out on the arms as well as on things like our socks. In cycling, the majority of brands will make quite big claims about their kit, saying they save X amount of time over a certain distance, or this suit is 10 watts faster than our last suit, but the data is very rarely ever provided to back up those claims. So what we do is be as transparent with our testing as possible. So on our website, we publish all of our test data from testing days here in the wind tunnel because we think it's really important if you're going to invest in a piece of kit you should be confident that that is a investment that's worth making. So this is a control test that I've run quite a few times. It's tested outrageously fast when it's the slower suit, and it's all bits that we've tested before. Um, so there's just some weird stuff going on. That panel is higher, which might be why. It's funny, because you consider wind tunnel testing sort of an exceptionally precise art, but every now and again we do get results that just sort of are quite strange. You get five to ten results all telling you one thing, you test it again and you get one result that tells you the polar opposite. So you go, okay, so in the news going on here, you've got to work out which one is right and which one is wrong and Sometimes you find out like, okay, there's something wrong with the rider or the fit. Um, and you test it again, and you go, okay, that's right, it's showing as you expect. Sometimes you look and you can't see anything wrong, although you then go and test it again, and the numbers say something different. You've just got to do lots of testing so that you have a, a high volume of data to make your decisions from. The advantage of a mannequin would be the repeatability of it. So whilst the legs on this one don't move, obviously it's static. It's not a particularly real world scenario. The movement of a rider is good for that. But for repeatability, uh, if you're looking at very fine details, then it's more useful. does not make you more aero. Really? Yeah. If you think about airflow over the top of the leg, the yeah. top of the pedal stroke, it's fairly clean going there. Yeah. Once you have a bit of one from the front, it's just gonna kick it off, make it really messy. Yeah. But can we try putting the stuff on the side of the legs? Because yeah. I'm thinking if it's, if it's more an issue of, if you have to put something somewhere and your back jersey and pockets are full, yeah. Would you rather have the pattern on the front or the side? Yeah, because the thing is, like, if I'm just, as I say, speaking from a punch perspective, if I'm trying to get something and I'm pedaling, getting something out of there is actually yeah, quite hard, right. whereas getting something out of there is actually is a lot yeah. easier. So when like, you're bumping around, like, there's like stuff going on, and this is like a, this is a lot more controllable than that thing right. this is. Yeah.
big, big drop off, and it's a gravel suit, so likely had a fitting, hitting 50k an hour, slim, but stuff on the sides at 50k an hour is 20 watts slower. That's a big jump. If you want pockets, the fastest option is to have them on the front. If they're not particularly useful, then the fastest thing to do is not have them at all. But pockets on the side is definitely the slowest. What we do is a, B test. So you'll start off with a baseline and then change one thing. So for us, a lot of these prototypes will be very similar to what our current kit is, just with one change. So that could be exactly the same suit, but with different panels on the arm. And we will run that and look at the difference in how that performs. And gradually over time and numerous different wind tunnel tests, you end up with new and improved kit. k an hour there's a five watts quicker so the current current socks that you did before that run you did 400 and a half watts and then with the socks you've got on now you did 395.5 uh, so the trip spacing there is a few millimetres wider. Millimetres? Yeah. Really? What are you expecting to see? Um, well, that? I've tested it, it. Both fabrics are tested differently on the arms, right. but it'll be interesting to see what happens on the legs with them. Okay. It's nicer to ride. Uh, yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a slightly lighter weight than the previous fabric, yeah. and it has the benefit of being a bit more breathable. The previous fabric we've used is a really nice one, but the quite a few things work against it in sense of um, trying to grip. Yeah. This test session today has given us quite a few things to look at and refine. I think it's important to know that these are test sessions if like more things don't work than do work and that is essential to the refinement of producing fast care if everything worked first time it's probably a good sign that you're not doing enough we tested out quite a few combinations today quite a few works there are a few that didn't so we will have to go back to the drawing board on the fabrics we're going to use for the gravel suit. We were testing out a fabric that we hoped worked especially well at low speeds. Turns out that it tested kind of on par, slightly worse than what we are going to use on our road race suit. So those fabrics will remain the same between the road race suit and gravel suit. For aero socks, the prototype that we tested today is considerably faster across the entire speed range than our current one. And again, in our single and double layer skin suits, we found some nice results with one of the textured fabrics for the arms, as well as the smooth fabric for torso and upper layer on the Neo suit.